destined this meeting to change somebody's life. Nothing you have today that is not given to you by God. This is what to do before your interview. This is what to do before your presentation. This is what to do before what you are afraid of. Pray in the spirit. It's a month of all possibility and their series of teaching is all things are possible. How many things? I caption tonight teaching the winning faith. Let's end on a winning note. The winning faith. First John chapter 5 verse 4. First John chapter 5 verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory. Faith is the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our faith always wins. Faith is the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith always wins. So tonight we'll be talking about the winning faith. The winning faith. Uh, and I'm going to be giving you seven steps uh, to your winning faith. Isaiah 28 verse 10 talk about step. Talk about precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here and a little there. So there are steps by step to win it. Uh, you are not just going to win suddenly. Prosperity in the kingdom, victory in the kingdom, winning in the kingdom is line upon line, precept upon precept. A little here, a little there. Uh, they don't just happen. In fact, 1 Corinthians 12, we call it the workings of miracles. So it's not just you suddenly arrive there, show us the walking. You know mathematics? Where you show walking. You know what I'm talking about. It's the walking. So there is a step to it. There is what I did for me to testify. Not that I just come here and say, my Lamborghini is outside. Sir, what did you do? God just did it. We are afraid of such testimony. I got a contract. And I did the job, the profit from the job. I bought a car. I gave my first fruit. And suddenly favor comes. And I got this. And it happened. Can I hear amen from someone? Yeah. Uh, that's what they call the workings. It is precept upon precept. Line upon line. A little here, a little there. You know, it can't just be suddenly. It can't just be suddenly. So seven step, seven lines, seven precept uh, to winning faith. Seven steps of winning faith. If you talk about winning step, faith, there are seven steps. Number one step, we learned that already. If you're going to win, if your faith is going to win, number one is that you must know the word. Say that very loud. Know the word. It entails studying the word. Second Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself a proof to God. A workman that need not to be ashamed. If you don't study, you will be ashamed. That scripture we just read, he said, uh, study to show yourself a proof. If you don't study, you will not be a proof. As a workman that will not be ashamed. You don't want to see shame, study. People want quick fees. Pastor, just lay hands on me and then my problem will be solved. God says, you want to get approval, you must study. As a workman, a workman is somebody that work things, that need not to be ashamed, but rightly, the word rightly dividing the word is taking different translation, dividing the word of truth. From this, you cross reference to NIV, to amplify translation, you rightly divide the word of truth. The reason we do that is for us not to see shame in life. If you don't study the word, study anointed books and material like the one I've just showed you, study the Bible, you'll be ashamed in life. So you must, and number one says know the word. You can't know the word until you study the word. You must read it with rapt attention. Switching off television. I mean, taking your phone and putting it aside. Anything that will distract you. Study to show yourself approved. Those who study, they get approval. 
And you know, this month is about faith. We are talking also tonight about the winning faith. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Job 22, verse 21. Acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. Acquaint yourself with the word. Thereby good will come to you. Receive the word from his heart. Lay up his word, verse 22, in your heart. Then you will lay up God as does. I pray thee the law from his mouth. Lay up his word in your heart. Then the volume verses, thereby good will come. If you return to the almighty God, and you'll be built up and you put away iniquity far from your tabernacle. You want good to come to you, lay up his word in your heart. Lay up his law in your mouth. Don't let the word of God depart. Acquaint yourself. Be, be conversant with the word. When you have conversation, let the word of God jump out of your mouth because you know the word. You study the word. And the word is so powerful. Hebrew 4 verse 12. The Bible says the word of God is quick. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is powerful. John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was the word of God. Jump to verse 4. He said in him the word of God is life. In the word of God is life. You want to enjoy Zoe. God's kind of life is in the word. And this life is the light of men. And the light, verse 5, shine in darkness. You want darkness to move away. Study the world. Know the world. And darkness comprehended it not. Verse 9 of the same chapter, he said, this is the true light that light everyone that came into the world. The word of God is the true light. There is no light any other place than the world. You want to shine in the midst of this dark world, know the world. Study the world. And the word of God always work. Joshua 1 verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you will meditate on it day and night. You will observe to do everything written there. Don't just study it. Do what is there. You know, when we come to the altar and uh, unveil the unfettered word, the raw word of God, people say in this generation, who will be able to follow what we teach? Who will be able to follow what the Bible says? The Bible is not old school. It's the word of God. Ancient word. You can't choose to write your own Christianity. You can't choose to live the other way. It is the raw word of God. He said when you meditate on it day and night and do, observe to do, not just read but do what the word says. Then you will make your way prosperous and what will happen to you? You will have good success. Good success is in the word of God. The primary source of faith is the word. It remains the only authentic source of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. You can't be a man and a woman of faith if you are not a man and a woman of the world. You can't separate faith from the world. In fact, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3, he said when you see people move in a dimension of faith, Romans 12 3, God has dealt with every man a measure of faith. You have your own measure. I have my own measure. A measure of faith. Your measure of faith is uh, in relation to the quality and quantity of word on the inside of you. I use those two words carefully. Quality. Quality is when you study and you find your own word. It has become a qualitative word. Customized word. And that is going to be my next step right now. Quantities that you are just reading. There are people who have been reading Bible cover to cover for 10 years, but yet no rema. They have quantum, quantity of the word, but the quality is not there. It's just reading like the Ethiopia eunuch who says, I'm reading this thing, but I don't understand what I'm reading. He said, how can you understand except somebody show me? Then he joined himself to Philip, and Philip began to teach him the word of God. You need to get this word into your system. Start with the quantity, then go to the quality. Oh, okay, I'm going to follow this daily reading of the Bible. Reading the Bible in one year, that's quantity. That's quantitative reading of the word of God. You, want, you just want to continue to read it, or you have 
a Bible reading on audio. Read Matthew, the whole chapter for me. They say Matthew chapter 1, you begin to read from the beginning and beginning, beginning, and begin to read all those things, and you are, you are getting those things into your system. It should get to a particular verse, and when that verse come alive, that is the qualitative. That at that point, you say, no, this is my word. Mark 9, 23 is my word. Mark 9, 23 is my word that I say, I believe, and all things are possible to him that believeth. This is my word. Mark 11, 23 is my word. I say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and I will not doubt in my heart. When you get to that point and you own it. So number two step is believe what you are studying. Believe the word. Number two step, believe the word. This is the realm where you own it. You own the word. You believe what you are reading. You own it. This is the revelation realm where the word now comes alive. It's not just empty word you are reading anymore. It has now become your own word. This is the realm of Rema. The review word of God. This is Joseph's word. On I was telling you that God wrote certain scripture with Joseph in mind. He wrote Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 with my name in mind. I will be the head and not the tail. I don't read that as logos. It has entered into my spirit. Wherever I find myself, I am the head and not the tail. I will be above only. I will never be beneath. Isaiah 60, the whole of Isaiah 60 was written with me in mind. It's my scripture. I own it. Arise, shine, your light is come. Verse 8, who are these that fly as a cloud and as a dove to their window? Verse 22, it says, a little one among you shall become a thousand. A small one among you shall become a nation. These are my reality. I don't need to read it before I say it. It has entered my spirit. It has become spirited. Well, when I say it, I say it with authority. Luke 10, 19 is my power scripture. Behold, I give unto you power to tear upon serpent and scorpion and over all the powers of the enemies and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. So these are things that they have entered my spirit. I own those scriptures. Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. So every time I say the blood of Jesus, I say it from the point of a revealed word, from the point of revelation, a powerful blood of Jesus. What is your own reality? So number two is believe the word. Own it. Let it become rema. Reveal word to you. And you know Luke 1, 45, he said, blessed is she that believe it. For there shall be a performance. No performance until you believe. What you believe is what you will enjoy. Until you, you believe. Not just reading it and it becomes quantitative word. Make it a qualitative word. I own it. I customize it. It's my word. And you see some of the scripture I've quoted here. These are conjugation of many years. Tied to events. Tied to different situations. Where, when you call those things, they answer to you. I know references of a counter with the power in the blood of Jesus that has raised people from the dead. Where I find myself in very difficult situation and all I need to do is to apply the power in the blood. And they overcame him. Satan, you have to leave this boy alone. Satan, you have to leave this girl alone. The blood of Jesus is against you. And before you know it, you will see salvation. You will see redemption. I have seen that power answer to me severally on several occasions. So when I was face to face with a court guy in Yabatek many years ago, and I was coming from TBS, it was a vigil, I was coming from that night. The only utterance, you know, I was just looking, where is the rector house? Where is the rector? I was new in the campus. Where is the rector house? And the guy who was taking me, he knows the court guys. They always tie something on their head. He cited him and he ran away. And um, here was high face to face with this guy. And as I turned and I was almost jamming him and we were face to face with one another. This is early in the morning to 5 a.m. We left TBS around 4 a.m. The only utterance in that difficult situation is to shout, the blood of Jesus is against you. Then he went on the floor bowing down. Then I walk past him and I go. I don't know what happened to him thereafter, but I said the blood of Jesus is against you. It went down then. I just passed. 
there's power in the blood of Jesus. So when we come to serve you, I say, shout the blood of Jesus. I'm shouting it from the encounter of raising the dead, encounter with court guys, encounter with different situations, and I've seen that blood answer. Can I hear someone shout tonight, the blood of Jesus? So, so I'm not just shouting it, I'm shouting it from a place of depth, and I have put it to work, and it has answered to me. Blessed is she that believe, for there will be a performance of the thing that he believed. Uh, Hebrew 11 verse 6 without faith it is impossible to please God but he that will come to God must believe when you come to God you must he that must come to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him you must believe believe is required Mark 9 verse 23 Mark 9 23 he said only believe if you can only believe how many things are possible to believe her? All things are possible to him that believe it. So step number two is what? Believe the word. Believe what you are reading. The word of God is true. The word of God is yea and amen. Step number three. Step number three, I want you to write, know that, but that is not the step. But we will join it together. Number three is God is committed. So add it to you, the first thing you wrote. Can you read it together now? Know that God is committed. You must know it. God is committed to what you have found. Number two is you own it. After studying it, you have, you, it has become revealed to you. Know that God is committed. Number three is that God is committed. God is committed to whatever he said. If God says it, he will do it. God cannot deny himself. Psalm 138 verse 2. Psalm 138, verse 2. He said, I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness, for you are true. For thou hast magnified your word more than your name, above your name. God takes interest. When God sees people using his name, he magnifies his word more than his name. Psalm 89 verse 34. My covenant will I not break nor alter the things that have gone out of my lip. God will not break his covenant. What he says he will do. What you have found, God will do. There is a word you are holding on to. This, this June, this June, there will be a performance. Yeah. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. If God says it, he will do it. Whatever he has said to you, he will make it good. Whatever he has spoken to you, he will make it good. Can I hear amen to that? Yeah. So God is committed. What you have found, God is able to do. What we have seen is that people don't study. They don't hone it. So they blame God. Somebody is looking for something and he's crying every day. Crying is not the solution. On this subject matter, what have you found? The reason people are bitter and crying is because there is no depth of the world. But pastor said, but someone said, but pastor, I have confessed the word. Now we know it's not just by confession. Let it come from a spirited platform. Let it come from a strong spirit. If you are confessing the word, don't confess it from a weak platform. Let it come from a strong spirit man. I know my redeemer live it. He that will come, will come. He will not tarry. Maybe it didn't happen year one. You keep saying it. You stand on the word of God. I know God is committed to me. I may look failing on the outside. Though our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. My baby is coming. My job is coming. My house is coming. And I don't know where that person is. When your own come, it will be the loudest. When your testimony land, it will be the loudest. It will be the blessed. To be the best. So what we see is that people don't stay long enough on the world. And they don't own it. We have learned tonight. It's not the quantity. Stop telling me I've read the Bible ten times. What is the benefit of your ten times? What can we see? I don't want to read the Bible 21 times. I just want to read it and get something. If one verse of the Bible enter your spirit, you are, you are good. If two enter your spirit, you are good. Just one revelation. Billy Graham, until he died, there is no other scripture. 
John 3.16. After preaching John 3.16 like a weakling, like a man who cannot talk, then he make altar call. What he has going for him is that in his crusade, you see celebrity, president, giving their life to Jesus. It's on record that Billy Graham was a special advisor to many United States presidents across party lines. You don't see that happening. When you see men of God in America, they are very vocal and they align with party. You know, they'll tell you, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican. You know, um, I mean, and they, 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 they are very public about uh, their parties and their political uh, decision in America. You won't see that in Nigeria, you know. But Billy Graham was a special advisor, spiritual matter to many presidents in the United States. By God's grace, just one line, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. You want to give your life to Jesus right now, please come to the front. Jesus loves you. Jesus saves you. Jesus heals you. Then you see them coming, coming from everywhere. Then you see the whole stadium packed with people just for preaching this simple message of God's love, of God's love. I want this thing to enter your spirit. It's not the quantum is the quality of the word you have in your spirit. And God is committed to one verse you have found. If you find two, if you find three, if you find ten, he's committed. He will never deny himself. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. What God said ten years ago, is he able to perform? Has God promised anyone here anything? Listen to me tonight, he has not forgotten you. He is committed. What God wants you to do is to bring your strong reason. Tell us why. Then you, you open the things you have found. Bring your strong reason. Isaiah 1 18 says, Come, let's reason this matter together. And don't forget where we started from. He magnifies his word above his name. When God sees you quote his word, he says, No, I can't deny my word. Whatever is written there, he said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one dot. Not one comma, not one full stop of my word will drop to the ground unfulfilled. God is committed to whatever he has said to you. Is there a prophetic word that has gone ahead of you? God is committed to what he has said. Number four step tonight. Speak to the situation. This is what we did last Sunday. God will not do for you what he has anointed you to do for yourself. Speak to the situation. Mark 11, verse 23. Whosoever will say to this mountain, you must say it to the mountain. You must speak to the mountain. God wants us to speak to our situation, to speak to the mountain around us. Speak to that difficult situation. Speak to your body. Speak to your finances. Speak to your economy. Like I told you on Sunday, Elisha spoke to time and economy. By this time tomorrow, time, hear me, favor these people. By this time tomorrow, food will be cheap and it will be excess. By this time tomorrow, somebody's life in this service is turned around. By this time tomorrow, what you have been praying from January will be in your hand. By this time tomorrow, there is a testimony. By this time tomorrow, healing in your body. By this time tomorrow, you are lifted. If I'm talking to you, let your amen be the loudest. When is it going to happen? This time tomorrow. Before sunset tomorrow, your story has changed. You're just moving forward. Speak. Speak. What I've just done right now is to speak to your situation. Speak to your life. Speak. God will not do that for you. I'm blessed and highly favored. The work of my hand is prosperous. Whatever I lay my hand upon shall prosper, shall blossom. I move forward. I make progress. I can never be barren. I can never be sick. I can never be down. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ that energize me. The hand of God is upon my life. I, pro I prosper on every side, on every issue in the name of Jesus I speak to you mountain it's time to move I speak to you barrenness it's time to go I'm blessed I'm a fruitful vine I'm blessed I live favor speak to the mountain God will not do that for you you gotta speak to the mountain the first three there's a God element study the word you're studying the word of God 
Believe the word. It's a thing of the heart. I believe, Lord. God is committed. It's dependent on God. And God is constant care. He never fails. But number four, it's time for you to speak to the situation. You have been studying. Let us see you vocalize what you have studied. I believe, therefore, I have spoken. You, we also believe. Therefore, we speak. You must speak. Paul will not do this for you. Pastor Joseph will not do this for you. Wake up in the morning and say, wow, look at this great man. He's up today. It's going to be a blessed day for me. A day of joy. It, all my enemies today, they are in trouble. Everywhere I go today, goodness and mercy, follow me. Testimony before the end of the day. My bank account is receiving inflow in the name of Jesus. The blessings of God is upon my life. I'm blessed and highly favored. Can I hear amen? That, that's what you do every morning when you wake up. Don't wake up in the morning and say, ah, I've woken up, woke up again. Yeah. Suffer, suffer every day. No light. This heat is too much. Now rain is coming. You know. Then you keep complaining and complaining and complaining. Then you wonder how come my day is not blessed. Wake up in the morning. Oh, what a glorious day. Hey, the lion is alive today again. Oh, all the chicken around me, you are in trouble today. Glory to God. You know, I used to live in the and in the sometimes my dog, uh, maybe uh, you want to open the gate, they escape, they go to the environment, and they come back home. But now I am living in the city. One day the dog escaped out of the gate. He started killing all the chicken in the environment. You know, until the people in the environment, they got hungry, they broke his leg. I just, I just pity those who did that, man. You know, they didn't know the value of what they broke the leg, uh, 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 you know. Until the, leg, the dog got injured and we had to bring the leg. Now we have to call doctor, uh, you know, to come and treat uh, the, the, the animal. I, so, I just feel so sorry as I'm even sharing it right now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, what I want to say is that that dog became a terror in the environment. It was eating all their chicken. This particular dog has killed a snake when I used to live in the bush. It doesn't allow anything to crawl in the premises. Lizard, not in my premises. Not under my watch. It will fix them. Nothing crawling around. You know, if we buy Christmas chicken and by mistake, you allow it to go near Captain. He will do Christmas before we do. <laughs> he will finish the, he will finish the, uh, the animal. Very intelligent, never allow anything. When you see, beware of dogs. I'm just telling you in case you come to a, around my house. When captain is outside, beware of dogs. You know, it does not allow anything crawling, anything strange. So he escaped into the environment and fixed all the chicken. In, in the environment, all the duck in the environment, they now used stick. They was chasing him, and I was out of the country when the thing happened. I came back, and oh, <laughs> what's number four? Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. This is the noise making part. So you see us shouting now because we're speaking to the mountain around us. Speak to the mountain. Your deliverance is in your mouth. Your, 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 your success, your victory is in your mouth. Speak to the situation. Romans 10 verse 10. He said, confession is made unto salvation. So terrier, deliverance, prosperity. Confession is made unto salvation. So you speak to the mountain. Speak up. Shout down the devil. You foul spirit of the devil. No more. Everything causing my finances to be drained. No more. I begin to move up. It's going to get better. This is going to get better for me. I, I speak to your life. June will be better than May. Yeah. So speak up. Don't stop. Don't keep quiet. Speak up. Face the situation. Speak against the devil. You foul spirit of sickness and infirmity. No more. I think it's time to go. I pain is time to go. Backache is time to go. Can I hear somebody say amen to that? Speak up. Shout down the devil. Number five. Number five step is at your faith. 
demonstrate your faith. James 2 verse 17 and 18. Uh, faith without work is dead, being alone. Faith without work. He said, show me your faith, then I will show you my own faith with my work. Show me your faith without your work. I will show you my own faith with my work. This is faith. Number five is at your faith. Faith with corresponding action is what we are talking about. Don't just confess faith. We want to see what you are acting. I hear many people say, they, why were you not in church yesterday? He said, I was strong. If you are strong, do what strong people do. Strong people come to church. Some people, they do like David, my soul. I know you don't like to go to church, but magnify the Lord. And my spirit, praise his name. Death will not hold me captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. I encourage myself. So if, if you are strong, you do what strong people do. Don't say I'm strong. Uh, don't say I'm strong. The devil is a liar. The, uh, my enemy have fever. If your enemy have fever, leave your enemy alone. You, strong, behave well. Say, my stomach is paining me. Then, no, stomach, you cannot fail me. You hit your leg against something. Say, healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of, I, I can't have a feeble knee. I can't have a feeble leg. I don't fall sick. I'm always whole. I'm always bouncing about. Can I hear amen? amen. At your faith. If you are healed, heart healed. Heart whole. If you are blessed, heart blessed. I can be poor. I don't beg. I don't borrow. Can I hear amen from someone? Yeah. Listen to me. When I preach this message, don't get offended. Just say what I say. Even if you don't understand what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the first law in consulting. The day I joined a consulting firm, my boss told me, put it behind him. He said, your boss is always right in this firm, even when you don't understand him. So I learned that like a military camp, he is always right, even though I don't understand what he's doing. So I'm saying to you, you are prosperous. Yeah. You will not borrow. Yeah. Even if you are borrowing, believe what I'm saying. You're going to come out of debt. Yeah. You're, going to, you're going to lend to nations. Yeah. Don't get offended. Don't, just align. Just align as I believe what Pastor Joseph is saying. I hate, I hate debt with passion. Say that with me. Say it ten times. Eight, nine more. Eight more. Seven more. Six more. Make it utter. Four more. Three more. Two more. The last one, make it utter. I hate death with passion. Yes. I hate it with passion. You, what will happen to you now, the next time you want to borrow, it will come to you. I hate debt with passion. Malo, 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 malo. I hate debt with passion. No, 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 no. I hate debt with passion. You are restricted by your confession. That is what happened to a young protege who went to a, a billionaire and said, Sir, I see your posh car. I see the things you drive. I see your house. I see your family. I just want to be like you. But I've tried. I've worked hard. I'm intelligent, but I'm still poor. So the rich man said to him, he said, the problem first is that it's that thing you said, I'm still poor. So there's a problem with the way you think. As a man think in his heart, so is he. So I, I need to change your mindset. You know what he told him? He said, I want you to go to this room, and that room they put only a piece of paper and a pen and a light, a table and a chair, nothing else in the room. He said, stay in this room and one million times say, I am a millionaire. I am a millionaire. When you are tired, write it, I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. So what you will see after hours, you can imagine how you, to become rich. They just say, stay in one room. I'll be saying, I'm a millionaire. Say it one million times. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a billionaire. I'm a millionaire. How do you even count? I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. You get to the time you are frustrated. You say, when you are frustrated, say it, keep writing, I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. What the man was trying to do is to get that into his subconsciousness. So everywhere you go, say, I'm a millionaire. How many of you were alive in the 80s? Do you know Mr. B? If you want to be a millionaire, think like a millionaire. If a man goes about, he says, think like a millionaire. Get it into your subconsciousness. I'm blessed. I'm blessed and highly favored. The work of my hand is blessed. And I want you to behave blessed. 
Number five is at your faith. Don't just say you have faith. At it. In heaven, God weigh action. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. We serve a God that weigh action. First Samuel 2 3. Yes, that's it. He said, let not ignorance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is God of knowledge. And by him, what does he weigh? Action. God weigh action. In Daniel chapter 5, verse 27 to 28, he found a king called Belshazzar. And he said, Belshazzar, verse 25 first, he said, Belshazzar, mene, mene, teke of Racine. What that is, means is that, go to verse 26 now. He said, mene means God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. You are finished. Then verse 27, he said, what that means is that you have been weighing a balance. We look at you from heaven. And we, you have found one thing. Your actions is not worthy of a king. 27, he said, your kingdom has been taken from you and has been divided. That's what he did in 25. He said, I divide, I finish it. It has been divided and given to midday and Pasha. I've divided and taken your kingdom away from you. We serve a God that way action. When God sees your action, you, you say something, but your action is contrary to what you are saying. If you say you are healed, behave healed. If you say you are blessed, behave blessed. Can I hear amen from somebody? If you say you have a job, go tomorrow and have a job. And please, don't allow the circumstances to make you change what you are saying. I have a job. I have a job. This week, I have a job. We don't go by working day. We go by what God has said. God has said, I have a job this week. I got a job this week. I've seen somebody will get employment letter on Sunday. Employment letter from multinational on Friday, on Saturday. God does not move by time. He's timeless. He's ageless. Is somebody blessed tonight? So at what you believe. Number six, share your testimony. Oh, many people miss this. God has done it, but they won't share it. They keep it to themselves. Uh, look at what David said. Psalm 119, verse 46. Yes. Psalm 119, verse 46. He said, I will speak of your testimony also before kings, for I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed to talk my testimony before those who matter. To share it in my office, to share it on the altar here. Please share your testimony. If God is doing small, small things in your life, go share it. This is what lifted David. David said, I will speak of your testimony before kings. I will speak before them and I will not be ashamed. So when he got to the palace, he told uh, Saul, he said, when I was keeping my father's sheep, the lion and the bear, they came after it. I went after them. I tore them. And the king was like, you mean you did that in the bush? He said, the same God that delivered me from the bear and the lion, he will give this Philistine to me. What a testimony. Share your testimony. Until you share testimony of the bush, you can't get to the palace. David shared the testimony of what happened in the bush. God promoted him. And that's how Goliath will come down. Every time you face something higher than you, share the testimony of what God has done before. Tell them the same God that helped me to pass jam will give me a job in Shell. <laughs> the same God that saved me from NYS in Gombe State, that God is alive. It's not, it's not dead. Has God done something great for somebody before that you know that this is the hand of God upon my life? Is that person in church today? Speak it on the rooftop. Tell the whole world. He said, I will share you my testimony before kings and I will not be ashamed. Every time God does you well and you keep it, you are proud. You are telling God that God, that miracle was not for me. It was a mistake you gave it to me. God will say, okay, next time I will not do it again. I will not, I will not push that blessing your way. Please, repent tonight. God has been so good to you. Share it. Until you share little things, you can't share bigger things. Until you share testimony of the Bush experience, how God delivered the beer into your life, you can't share testimony of national issues like Goliath. Until you share testimony of the Bush, you can't get to the palace. So you must share testimony of little things, little deliverance, deliverance, the things God has done for you, for you to get to bigger place. Don't be ashamed of God. God has been so good to you. And know Isaiah 44, 26, he said, God will confirm the word of his servant. It is what you share that God will confirm. There are testimony that will have been perfected, but because you didn't share it, there was no confirmation. 
Somebody said, no, what if I go and share it? This testimony is not ripe. There are witches and wizards everywhere. I don't want anybody to steal my testimony. You know, there are people who, they cover these cover things until what they are covering themselves uh, becomes still, become obsolete. Share little things. Oh, I thank God for this good thing he has done for me. I thank God for giving me a new job. I thank God for this new car. He said, no, I can't share testimony of, the, of this small car. You know, when you don't share testimony of small, it can't become big. The small thing God has done for you, go public. Share it. Share your testimony. It's a step to winning in this kingdom. The more we share testimony, the more we humble Satan. Satan knows that, wow, this man has entered the perfect realm of his life. And finally tonight, uh, refuse to give up. So I've given you all this step, and I remember saying that they are not foolproof. Somebody said, but pastor, I've been practicing most of the things you have said tonight, but I've not seen a result. Number seven is for you. Refuse to give up. Go back to step one to six again. Repeat it. Refuse to give up. I at 19 verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. The word of God will never fail. God never fail. God is not going to start failure with you. He's not going to experiment failure with you. I don't know what you are believing God. Maybe somebody is here tonight and your own is relationship. Your own is marriage. Your own is career. Your own is um, um, what, 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 what other things are represented here? Child bearing. There is nothing that you have as a request that God has not done for somebody before. Can I hear amen to that? Yeah. Nothing. Professional advancement, nothing. Passing a professional exam, nothing. Having a child, nothing. He has done it before and he will do it again. Habakkuk 2 verse 4, faith comes by. Habakkuk 2 by 4, the just shall live by his faith. You will live only by your faith. Hebrew 10, verse 38, repeated the same scripture, but I like the last part of Hebrew 10, 38. He said, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. You have come this far not to draw back. You keep at it. You go back to it. It does not work this year, it's going to work next year. It does not work this month, it's going to work next month. You keep your hope alive and you don't look at the lying vanities. Your body is telling you you are weak. Hey, this confession ain't working. You say, no, it's going to work. It always works. So mightily grew the word of God. God and it prevailed. I know my Redeemer living. My husband is coming. This month of June, he will propose. He, he will gather boldness. I speak to him anywhere in the world. There is somebody who is looking at you right now, but he's not bold to tell you she loves you. Tonight, the lady and the brother, they are in church and the brother is receiving boldness. He said, from this message tonight, I just want to tell you, I've always had this thing on, the, on my heart, but I don't have the boldness, but the dot here the Lord. You know when somebody cannot be bold and say, I want to, I love you. He said, dot here the Lord. You, 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 you are my wife. And he's shaking, he's shaking like a jellyfish. Dot here the Lord. Bottom line, he has said something. He has said something. And say something. Another challenge we have in the church is that the ladies, they have too high expectation. You are waiting for the guy to come and propose in a restaurant, close down the restaurant, put all the betters and all the blah, 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 blah. The man is a bush man. They do it under the honoring tree, under the mango tree. They do it inside the church. They do it after choir rehearsal. They do it... Bottom line this month, don't set criteria that God has not set for you. Let the man propose. Anyhow, anywhere. Let's pray tonight. Stand on your feet, let's pray tonight. Somebody, are you blessed tonight? If one to six is not working, number seven is go and start all over again. Keep at it. Keep at it. Keep saying it. 
so mightily grow the word of God and it prevails. God never fails. Faith always wins. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Tonight, lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. My faith will always win. I will not fail in life. I will not fail in destiny. Can I hear everybody pray tonight? My faith will always win. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give in. I refuse to pack my bag. I refuse to pack my bag. I will win. Any hour, any hour, I will win. This 2024, I will win. In the next 24 hours, a major testimony is coming. In the name of Jesus, in the next 24 hours, a major miracle is coming. Lift up your voice and pray for yourself. Lift up your voice. I will not lose. I will not fail. I will not see shame. Victory is mine. Success is mine. Open door is mine. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. My redeemer liveth. My job is on the way. My car is on the way. My house is on the way. I am a Botakata. Favor. Favor. This service I receive. Strange under your favor. In the name of Jesus, whatever I lay my hand upon shall prosper, shall blossom, shall be on the increase. In the name of Jesus, everywhere I go, strength, favor, strength, honor. In the name of Jesus, I will not give up. I will not give in. He's working for me. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of debt. I'm coming out of lack. I'm coming out of borrowing. I'm coming out of shame. I'm coming out of reproach. Pray for yourself tonight. Pray for yourself tonight. Pray for yourself tonight. Sharabarakata. That I see that is with me. That he that is in the world. The greater one is on the inside of me. I will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. Rock up, Pray for yourself tonight. We don't fail. We don't fail. We don't go down. The greater one is on the inside of me. Business is blessed. My family is blessed. My children are blessed. The work of my hand is blessed. Speak the word. Speak the word. On the word. On the word. Customize the word. Say what you believe. Say what you believe. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the situation. Keep at it. Don't give up. Is here. My someone is here. My baby will be born alive. My baby will be born alive. Jesus. We pray. That's the winning faith. The winning faith is a speaking faith. You don't stop. You heart your faith. You talk your faith. You speak to the mountain. You keep at it. Even when failure is guarding, he said, no, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I see. My heartward man is perishing, but there's something on the inside of me that will not look at the mountain. I don't care what I see. Their defense is gone away from them. God is with me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The one with me is more than those who are against me. I have God on my side. I'm a winner. I'm a success. I'm a victor. I cannot fail. I cannot see shame. Are you not like a, like a missile? The word comes from the inside of you. No, I don't consider you this war. I don't consider you sickness. I don't consider you infirmity. I don't consider you. This doctor report is on fire. I command you to catch fire. I stand on the word of God. The word of God says I am healed. The word of God says I am whole. The word of God says I am blessed. The word of God says I am the head. I am not the tail. I stand on the word. That's the winning faith. The winning faith must be consistent. 
in the midst of affliction. Because in heaven, they weigh actions. We have weighed you in the balance. And we found you wanting. Don't say something in church and do something else outside. Heaven weigh actions. They are looking for people with the right corresponding action. You leave this month. I don't know if there's any other month we can go depth like this in faith this year. Leave church tonight and say, no, my faith is on fire. No, I, I will not be caught saying negative things. I will never say it. I'm blessed. I live favor. And favor follow me. Then you begin to heart like a blessed person. You begin to you begin to act. You begin to walk the talk. Do what you are saying. Can I hear amen from someone? All eyes closed tonight and all head bow. You in church tonight and say, Pastor, thank you for this message. Can you please pray for me? I want to move close to God. I want to serve him. I want Jesus to be Lord over my life. Lift up your right hand. Let me pray for you if you are that person. Lift it high above your head. Tonight is your night. Lift it very high. Don't be ashamed. Come and join me. Come and join this winning club. Lift up your hand above your head. If you are lifting up your hand, lift it high above your head and say with me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Wash me by your blood. Make me whole. Confess you, Lord over my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. Proceed to speak with friends desirous of helping you grow in your newfound faith by dialing the numbers on display. Connect with more teachings and messages on Pastor Joseph Aborowa via these social media handles. If you have been blessed by this teaching and would want to sow a seed towards promoting the work of God, go ahead to do so using the following bank account details. Worship with us at any of our branches worldwide as displayed on your screen.